Okay, so this is a wee video for anyone who's got a Reese and Muller load cargo bike or possibly for any cargo bike that's got a center stand. You can see the main problem with one of these cargo bikes is that it's way too long to fit on the back of a car like a normal bike. So what do you do if you want to bring it away? So for me, um, I thought, well, the only option could be a roof mounted option but there's nothing on the market for these bikes in particular. So I made something up and um, I thought I might share this if anyone wants to maybe borrow the idea. So essentially what it is, it's just a platform, a wooden platform. You can make it out of anything, I suppose, maybe metal, that uh, runs across my roof rack and just long enough for the wheelbase from the back wheel through to the center stand. Uh, as obviously all the weight is on the center stand, and the back wheel there's no worry about the fact that it overhangs the front of the car so I'll show you now briefly how I did it so what it's made out of is probably about a centimeter thick hardwood plywood and it's got two maybe two by two inch supporting beams that run across on that side and on the other side as well um, a little hole cut out of it here just for aerodynamic just to let the wind come up through so it doesn't act as a sail and as you speak of aerodynamics as well I've actually just uh, put this little piece of plastic on to help direct the wind down below the roof bar and away from it from the uh, from the top edge as well so that's aerodynamics and as you can see also sanded things down just to give them a little bit more of a aerodynamic edge as well so what are these well, these are just simply for my setup because with my roof rack, the farthest apart the roof bars can be, as you can see, is there and there. But that doesn't give me the length of the wheelbase that I need. So the wooden platform extends past the roof bar. So to give the, the wheel an extra bit of support on the wood, I've added in these top supports here which drill down into the bottom supports as well so that just adds a bit of sturdiness you can see there's no flex in that whatsoever so the rear wheel just rests up nicely on it i know it might look like it's slightly behind but actually the weight is perfectly on it so so that's that just one small thing I glued on some rough um sandpaper here for the rear wheel and also up here for the for the front legs just to stop them from slipping and sliding and it's actually very effective it doesn't slide at all and the other thing is and probably one of the most important things drilled holes and how this is actually mounted to the roof bars is using what i found on the internet anyway just a roof box fitting kit um i think the make was nor drive um and this was about 15 euro you can get them on ebay so there's four fittings as you can see so it is well stuck on and ain't going anywhere that's the roof rack itself isn't going anywhere as you can see hard to see but i'm shaking it really hard and isn't budging at all um and then obviously the last part is how do you strap the bike down so as you can see plenty of plenty of good straps so these are all weighted for over 250 kilograms each so as you can see the one important thing that you need to be sure of is to make sure that under heavy braking or even just braking that the bike doesn't come forward because as you know with the center stand if the bike moves forward the center stand goes up and poof, disaster so the most important thing is to make sure that the bike cannot move forward obviously backwards or sides but forward is, is very bad so that's what this strap here is about it goes around the center tube comes down comes down in behind the roof bars and stops the bike from moving anywhere near forward this strap stops the bike moving backwards and then these two straps here are kind of stabilizing straps to stop it moving side to side as you can see if you can't see i'm literally hanging out of this and it's not going anywhere so the last part in all this as well is as you can see i've disassembled the bike so i had a child seat on it so i've taken out the floor and i've taken out the front panel the child seat and the rear panel just to allow the wind come through the bike. Um, you could probably take off the side panels, but to be honest with you, I'm just a bit lazy. So 
So that's really it. Um, quick note on cost, I suppose. I mean, the wood itself here, probably about 20 euro. The little fitting kits here, maybe another 15 euro. Um, add in the straps, maybe another 10 euro. So what's that, 25 and 20 by 40? You're probably about 50 euro, I'd say, you can get, get all that made up. So maybe also one last point is how do you lift it up? And that's a good point. <laughs> um, as you can see, stripped down and without the battery, obviously, it's probably around about 25 kilograms. So it's not that heavy. It needs a two person job. And the way we do it is I have my wife standing here holding the front end. I come around the back and I lift the back wheel up put it rested up on top of that then I help her and move forward and lift up the front end and slide on to the to where it's supposed to go so it's actually quite easy um, to lift up particularly stripped down so there you go seems to work for me I've had it on the motorway at about 120 kilometers an hour um, that was just overtaking I would drive normally about 100 probably just with the weight as you can see I have a toolbox as well on the side so that helps the uh, the bit of storage. And for anyone interested, that's a Reese and Muller uh, Roadster Mixty, which is a fantastic bike. That's what my wife has. So uh, sponsored by Reese and Muller. I think that's about it, really. Um, yeah. So if anyone's any questions or anything like that, give me a shout. Drop me a comment. Cheers.